to session number nine. And uh, if if all goes well, uh, we'll have 10, 11 and 12 later on today. Uh, actually, as I look at the schedule for today, we're talking about things that are most uh, uh, m most system dependent. Uh, these are the things that are of most concern to the people in the audience, I imagine, because they're the things where you're going to have to be responsible to make it work on your own system. Um, on the other hand, the, um, uh, uh, the percentage of things that I have to cover to the things that are in the book is um, uh, is is much higher, which means that I can I can go slower today. Yesterday I was take I was I was taking huge parts of tech and just waving my hands and say it does it sort of like this. Uh, today we're taking small parts of tech, the small system dependent parts, and we can go over them slowly and leisurely, make sure that everyone gets a thorough understanding of what's involved. Um, and file names is our, is the agenda for this hour. Starts in module number 428. I think we'll be able to uh, keep the lights on uh, all hour, as far as I know, as for the uh, TV people back there. <clears throat> um, now, uh, here we're we're getting into the subject which is which makes portable software the the most difficult um, because operating systems, different operating systems. Uh, um, differ in the way they want to refer to file names. Um, I thought once that maybe we should just say that in, as a, someone's writing in tech and wants to say input from a file or, or name a font, uh, some file, that tech should have its own language for file names so that it could be independent of, mach of systems. But there was just no way that I could do this and make it make it right. A person who's who's using tech as a as one of his uh, uh, or her favorite tools um, on a system will definitely want to call file names by the by the same conventions that are used for the other programs that are used on that system. So um, we have to live with the fact then that there will be there will be programs written in tech that are going to include syntax that isn't going to be parsable on other on other installations of tech just in this place where we refer to names of files. Um, now, uh, um, there should be something that works everywhere. Namely, if we if we have a file that is the name is entirely composed of letters, then every version of text should be able to do a reasonable thing with it. So, I mean, if, I, if someone says in input um, paper, paper should refer to some file called paper that I think we'll be able to handle on all on all installations of tech. The, um, the, the strange thing happens that what if uh, it's somebody else's paper and so we have to say um, input um, uh, SE for somebody else paper on one operating system or we have to say paper uh, you know, SE slash paper on another system and paper bracket one comma SE on another system and so on. And there's lots of other different kinds of bracketings and things that are used in, in order to locate things in file, file servers and on networks and various things. Um, then it's going to be different everywhere and it depends on the system dependent version of tech to parse these names and to come up with something sensible about them. Now, so, in, you know, but I want to try to have a little bit of uniformity in all of this. And, uh, and so I tried to write tech uh, 82 in such a way that, that uh, the system dependency would be factored out into a, into a small number of, of, of uh, routines that could, be caused, that could be called in a system independent way. Um, and uh, this this is uh, an attempt then to get as much portability as, as we could, uh, given the fact that we that uh, that we couldn't be completely um, uniform across all systems. Now, um, 
uh, I'm sure that if I interviewed the people in the audience, I'd get another long, longer list of, of possibilities. And certainly, I see the guy from MIT right, right here, and, and uh, they have uh, a, a really strange uh, uh, bunch of conventions. Okay. Um, now, uh, we can talk about, uh, for example, on their, on their system, it, it, you, you give two names separated by spaces and then paper. Uh, is one of the ways to work it on that system. And one of the things Tech likes to say is that a space is a delimiter after a file name. So if the, if the name of the file is going to include spaces, then they should put quote marks before and after um, and, 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 and uh, take spaces out inside of there, for example. Some kind of a thing, scheme like that would, should be implemented. But it should also be consistent that somebody who does, who does this can be comfortable with the idea that it'll also work at MIT even, uh, you know, and all, and all the other things. The, the reason that MIT is and, and Stanford tend to be more different is because they started first <laughs> and uh, the conventions persisted over, over many years. Um, and the reason this whole thing is in such a mess is because computer scientists haven't considered that file naming was, was part of real computer science and, and uh, never really pay much attention to the problem. Uh, it was always left off as being, uh, as, as, as being some, something uh, for hackers or something, and it was never, um, but it's never considered as a scientific problem. Um, and so we had this proliferation of things. The same applies to, a, to a, almost as much a degree, just in, all input output in general. Um, computer scientists have tended to work on what you do inside the machine once you got it in there and before you put it out. But uh, uh, but, it, but input and output uh, never was was given a very clean solution in the uh, uh, in la in languages like Algol and so on, where the where the uh, the best uh, uh, language designers have really have really sat in committee meetings. They didn't they just didn't uh, tackle input output. Uh, because they didn't uh, somehow it didn't meet their taste for what was an in, what was an important problem at the time it should have been but it but uh, it didn't so um, so we have this problem let's see how we how we can approach it now the thing that the, the thing that tech uh, uh, 82 wants to impose on uh, is is at least one kind of thing that that a file name consists of three parts. Um, it consists of the name part, paper, and it consists of an area part, which which indicates what area this this uh, this might be on, what uh, a location within a large file directory, and uh, there's an extension part. Now it seems to be that true that when using these systems that we've been talking about, we're in, that that uh, it makes sense to have relate have. have have related files, and in the uh, in the systems we, we've been using here, we, we relate the files by giving them the same name but different extensions. So a person running paper would write a file called paper.tech, for example, and then he could he could expect, as a result of his run, to get paper.dvi. Um, for his output, the DVI file, paper.err, for the uh, transcript file of his session containing uh, his error messages and more information, uh, diagnostic information. Um, if somebody uh, has a font called basic, uh, I mean a, a, a format uh, uh, or macro package called basic.tech, and you input that to any tech you would expect to get out basic dot fmt for the for format. When we write a program in web tech, we have tech dot web, tech dot ch for the change file. We compile that into tech dot pascal or something for the pascal file and tech dot pool for the string pool file. Some kind of this this idea of having uh, the, having a family of names with extensions on it seems to work reasonably well with other operating systems, and uh, uh, it could be you don't need a dot for that if you don't like a dot, but uh, 
Um, in the um, examples in the tech manual, it's, they're, they're, we're going to use a dot um, to indicate that. Now, the area is, is the, or file directory or whatever you call it, uh, telling you how you get there. Um, uh, if it's not specified, you have some, some notion of a default area. The, for example, whatever the user is logged in under is, the, is used as the area. But at every system, you have some natural idea as to what that's going to mean for the, for the default area when, when no area is mentioned. And when it is mentioned, then it might even be partially defaulted and so on. There's, there's a, a variety of conventions for that. Um, uh, let's talk about fonts also. Um, here I've got uh, a format file. Here I've got a, a um, paper file. What if I have a font? Um, F, F is, my, is, say, the name of a font. Um, then um, when I'm running Metafont, I would have ff.mf for the Metafont source file. And it would produce lots of different kinds of output. It might produce ff.dvi uh, if we're doing proof mode. Uh, but for, and and ff.pxl for the bit image of the font. Ff. Uh, um, TFM is the one that concerns us. The tech font metric file, this would give the information to tech. And uh, a variety of other possible things. Uh, FF.CHR is what we're using for files that can be edited so that you can, you can uh, play with the pixels yourself at low resolution. Um, OK, so this idea of extension is there. And we also have the programs TF to PL and PL to TF. I'll be talking about later today. So there would, so you could you could read the FFTFM file and convert that into FF.PL. So for for a variety of these things, we we seem seem to see that we want um, a name of a um, the name, and then an extension telling what uh, what class of file uh, relating to this name uh, is involved. Now, um, slight difference is, is there is exists though between font files and and uh, these other kinds of files, because usually the fonts are something that live that that, that their home is in the system, while uh, a person's paper is on his own area. So when you specify no area for a paper, it means your own login area. If you specify no area for a font, it means the system font area. If you want to use a font that's only your own, that you just made yourself with Metafont, say, then you then you are supposed to really specify your own area specifically, in the case of fonts. Because if you because if you leave it blank, that's going that's going to mean the the system font by that name, unless the, unless there is no system font by that name. It would look but it would look first for the system font. Or so so our uh, and I think that we have to uh, realize that these that these are different. So tech is, is using that assumption now that the that if the area is is blank, um, it, me, it, it, it means the default area of some sort. But the default for fonts is the system font area. The default for other things is the user's logged in area. Okay. I tried yeah, once. If on a file name uh, for where are you, Arthur? Okay. If on a file name for uh, a uh, tech source file, we omit the directory and it's not a directory specification and it's not in our area, does it look in the system area afterwards as it used to? Yes. Yes. That, that it's built in right now that we have a default uh, area to look to look before complaining that we couldn't find the file at all. So it looks first on your area, and then it looks on the system, on a system area. Um, we'll we'll see that later on this hour. I I think I'll get to that. Um, uh, and this could be extended to to look in several to go through a sequence of other areas um, uh, in, before giving up and and saying uh, I can't find your file. Please give me another name. But right but right now it, 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 the code does support one one extra try on a. Uh, after the after backslash input. Um, okay, good point. Now, now, uh, uh, in 
in the case of font files, we have to communicate the file name to the DVI file. So after we get this, after Tech has read in the font file, then the DVI file is going to have to contain the name of that font for communication to the outside world. And so the name, the name of the font is given by giving its area and its name. And uh, both of those are um, are are uh, sequences of ASCII codes. So um, in the DVI file specification, well, we'll see it later. But it turns out that uh, the area, which is usually empty for the system fonts and the name are given as a sequence of ASCII code or more precisely tech internal codes so that the font name uh, that you use comes out in a DVI file without the extension, without a TFM, without any extension whatsoever. Okay, now how are we going to do this? I, I tried once to, to think of a scheme that would encompass all of the world's naming conventions for, font, for, for files. And, as, and then um, um, uh, I, I would parse. Uh, I, I would I would parse this, and I, I would have a universal uh, every, except MIT. I left out MIT. I had every other possible scheme of, of, of file naming that I that I could find, and I and then I was going to uh, define the syntax for this, and then put it all into a thing, and then and then uh, 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 let the, the system dependent parts just just uh, uh, look at this or maybe even work, work it on all systems. Well, that was a failure. It, didn't, it couldn't be done. Um, so instead, I, I, uh, I said what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask everybody to write three procedures that are explained there in module 429. Begin name, more name, and end name. <clears throat> And uh, when tech comes to, the, to a point where it needs a file name, for example, it has just passed uh, the keyword input or some other place where it needs a file name, there are more than you might uh, imagine uh, after fonts and so on, then it will start and it will call the procedure begin name. Suppose somebody writes input and then after that he, he has a sequence of characters, C1, C2, C3, and so on after this is after a macro expansion so tech will then supply tokens to the to or well characters actually to the to these uh, to the thing more name takes in um, uh, C uh, ASCII code uh, tech internal code symbol as a parameter uh, but begin name and end name don't have parameters okay now what's well, what tech is going to do uh, oh by the way this is a it, it, this also returns a value. So this is a function that returns a Boolean value. Um, tech will first call begin name, and then it will get the next character of the input and um, uh, uh, expanding macro if, if it was there. And uh, if the if the next character is not a, it is a tech primitive, something like def or something like that, then tech will immediately call end name and say that, uh, that we've got to the end. Um, if it's a blank space, tech will also, uh, I believe, call end name right away. But if it's a character, um, then it will call more name of C and get a value back, true or false. More name is going to return true if the name if, if the name has uh, hasn't ended yet um, uh, as far as it knows that this, this needn't have to be the end of the name but more name would return false if this is definitely the end of the name and tech should stop uh, in tech should, should call end name immediately afterwards and uh, so we'll keep calling more name, more name, more name until we either get to something that tech thinks is the end of the name or until more name says false. Tech thinks it's the end of the name when I get to something that isn't a character or when I get to a blank space. So this means that, at, for example, at MIT, if the first character of the name is um, a quote mark, then uh, more name would return true until it got to another quote mark and it would tell tech that it was false. For example, this is a way that 
that um, the logic of calling these three procedures would be, would, would be the same on all systems, but the three procedures themselves be, be different. Now, after, in, after uh, this is all done, an end name has been called, then what's supposed to happen is that we're supposed to have three global variables have been set up called cur area, cur name, and cur ext for the area, the name, and the extension. And these are string numbers. These are pointers into text string pool, uh, giving what those areas are in, as a string that could be printed out in, print, in principle. So these are, these are, the result of end name will be, will be those three areas, uh, those three, uh, those three things. And they're all strings in, in the sense of text strings that we talked about a couple days ago. Um, if the, uh, w one of the strings that you can have in tech is, is the null string. Um, Pascal compilers, uh, don't always allow null strings, uh, but, uh, any, um, uh, but uh, if the null string is, is, is one of the ones that tech has in its pool, and that would be used if the area is blank and the extension is blank. So if this guy just writes paper here, it should, cur name should be the string P-A-P-E-R, and cur name, area and cur X are blank. That's the one thing I want these, these to satisfy. The other things are dependent on what you think is, is appropriate for your particular system. So, for example, if this... Um, um, just to, you know, if, if this, if, if for, um, I had DEK paper here, um, and I was using a top 20 system, then, uh, um, the, the program would call begin name, begin name would, uh, would, would set some kind of initialization so that it knows what it's doing. Uh, these three procedures typically will communicate with, among themselves with uh, global variables. And then I'll call more name of, 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 of less than, more name of D, more name of E, more name of K, and so on, more name, until I get to more name of R, and then I get a space and I wouldn't call more name anymore, I'd call N name. Or, or if something, after, something besides, like a backslash input again comes right after that, then I would, I would again uh, 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 quit. Okay. <clears throat> now, um, in order to illustrate that, the program assumes a, spe a special kind of, of uh, syntax that is, uh, uh, that is typical of other ones, but it's one that was close enough to something I was familiar with that I could, I could do. Um, and, and so um, the example of how to write begin name, more name, and end name in, this, in these sections are based on a, sim on a simple um, uh, simple scheme that's defined um, in module 430, and here's the scheme that I that I propose there. If the name contains a, a greater than sign or a colon, the file area consists of all characters up to including the final such character. So if you had several colons, several greater thans, and so on, um, only the last one counts. Otherwise, the area is null. Now, after you've thrown away the area by this rule. Then you look for, dot, for, for dots, and if there's, if there's several dots, only the first one counts. Not the last, but the first one counts. And then um, uh, that, the, the extension would be every character, including that first dot, for, for, uh, to the end. Otherwise, the extension is known. So that's the, that's the, that's the, the uh, proposed uh, example that's used in the, in, in the uh, program. And it, in order to implement that, I did that by having two global variables called the area delimiter and the x delimiter. And uh, this would just be a place in the string pool where, where uh, the most recent um, or relevant um, uh, delimiter has occurred, either a greater than sign, a colon, or a period. So we have, um, uh, so as, um, in, in uh, our score system, for example, in order for me to refer to paper, I would have to say CSD dot DEK paper. And I could, I could also refer, to, I could also say dot um, tech dot two 
in order to refer to version two of the paper. In that case, th this would be the area and this would be the extension because I pick up the first period and, and, I, and I don't count the period that's in there. Okay, now how, how does more name implement that? Well, it's simple. It has a pointer to the, the, the most recent uh, right uh, greater than sign or colon and uh, a pointer to periods. And uh, so it starts putting in the string pool a left arrow. Let's see, let me um, uh, give myself another board here. So I'll have my um, um, area delimiter A and my X delimiter E, and initially they're null. Uh, so I put in the string pool the first character less than, then a C and an S and a D and a period. Well, this looks like the, ex the external delimiter should be a period because uh, this might be the extension coming up here now. Uh, D, E, K, and a greater than sign comes along. A greater than sign says, uh oh, this is an area delimiter. So I'm supposed to remember the, the, the final greater than sign. And so that comes here. Also, I, I wipe out E at this time because they don't count if they're in the uh, area part. And then it would say P A P E R dot. E starts the point there. If I got a colon now or something, it would wipe this out again. Uh, T E X period. Uh, now I check with this period, I check that this guy is, is, is already non-null, so I don't change him again, uh, two. And then um, end name is called. Now, end name has to figure out from the, the fact that A is pointing somewhere and E is pointing somewhere that, um, uh, uh, what, that, this act, that this string here is supposed to re really be broken into three strings. And so I think the code does that. Um, and it makes up three strings uh, in the string pool according to the, the conventions of the string pool. So that string start of cur area would be here. String start of cur name would be here. And string start of cur x would be here. Okay. So these three programs you need to write uh, to do the right thing for your system. Now. Um, we also have to figure out how we're going to open files that, that are there. And Pascal doesn't give us a, uh, Pascal was really intended more for uh, small self-contained uh, programs when it was, when it was designed. But, but uh, it's, uh, it's been always extended now so that it's possible to, on, on every Pascal I know of, to say reset um, and then you say file name and then you have some file variable this is uh, in your Pascal program then you have some way to say what file you want to open so let's suppose that in this in, that we're working with Pascal that allows us to put here like name of file okay paper um, uh, now Let's suppose that this has this string has to be of a, of a certain definite length. It uh, depends on on which Pascal you have as to what happened. But anyway, you should be able to specify uh, the name of some file that you want to to input to uh, to the uh, system routine for resetting. If you can't do that, uh, you just can't possibly use tech because tech has to be able to read from files that aren't known at uh, at compile time of the Pascal program. Um, so file variable and then we have some extension that allows us to do this e either by some system call or some something it's got to be possible and it almost and it, and it is so now what about this string here well let's see tech call tech uh, when it does this uh, it assumes that this string I believe is called name of file mm, I should have reviewed this this morning but that's it name of file so we're going to say that this parameter here is a is a very is a global variable called name of file, 
and tech is going to set that global variable name of file um, before it tries to, to, to reset the file. And the system procedure that does this is called pack file name and it's in module 436. Pack file name has three parameters N, A, and E in this order and there's string number which means that you know it's an indication of a string it's text it's text uh, idea of strings so so uh, if you give it uh, the three strings that you found that after end name those strings are supposed to exist in cur name and so on um, and then pack file name will do it now tech is going to substitute its extension though sometimes you see that's it. so if, if cur name for example is uh, paper um, and then um, tech um, is going to it's want to output to paper dot er to paper dot err then pack file name is going to be called with the extension part set to a string dot err so so tech will and similarly dot dvi dot fmt tech will generate other calls on pack file name for other things by, by tech's going to manufacture combinations of file names according to this uh, according to this procedure Okay, now um, um, we we need uh, okay. So pack file name does that and and uh, puts into the global variable name of file the uh, uh, the thing the thing in the in the correct format. Now I don't know if anybody here has a 10x system, uh, one of the old uh, DEC operating systems, but in that case, uh, in order to call reset. On, on one Pascal compiler that I know of, you had to have an, you had to have two parameters in, for, for name of file. You had to have a string and and a um, pippin. And the pippin was given in what they called six-bit code, which was a pack, which was a curiously packed 36-bit word full of six-bit uh, numbers. And uh, it's the only way the operating system would accept it. Um, and and uh, so the reset procedure had three parameters, and, and uh, so this pack file name procedure on such a on such a version of Pascal would would have to set two things. One of them would require a uh, a calculation of a six-bit code from the uh, extension in some in some uh, grungy manner. But this was uh, this is necessary, uh, and I'm sure that there, that uh, that there are even weirder systems in existence that are going to need this. But that's what why I put this up as a separate routine and don't consider it uh, system independent. Um, further, uh, furthermore, on the better Pascal compiler that I'm using now on sail system, I have um, we put the um, area last uh, instead of first. And so pack file name is certainly different on this machine than it is on others. So anyway, though, you got that one. Now there's a there's another program you need also besides pack file name, which is pack buffered name, and this one is um, not as 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 clean. Um, uh, it, but it, it's unfortunately necessary because sometimes we we um, we're going to have to be getting. A, fi a file name um, before the tech has been able to set up its strings. You see, when tech starts out uh, and, and we've got a virgin version of tech, it has to read in its strings. It doesn't know any strings. It can't use the, its idea of cur area, cur name, and cur extent, uh, extension at all because strings don't exist yet. We have to get the format file. So, so uh, the the uh, user is uh, based on the user's input. We'll know whether there's a format file or not, uh, uh, um, or, or, or to use a standard format file like BASIC. Um, and we haven't got strings yet, so I have to do something special there, and get the and get the uh, name right out of the buffer. And so, uh, this routine is got different kind of parameters. And um, uh, it's, n is the first parameter is called a small number. A small number is um, zero to sixty-three. 
uh, it's generally even smaller. Um, uh, and then A and B are also um, parameters to this thing. But A, um, N and A don't rec don't match the N and A there, so it probably wasn't a good a, a good idea. To, um, but let, these are integers, but also t typically small. Um, and the idea is that uh, that we, that we're going to manufacture name of file from something in the buffer instead of using the, the nice begin name, more name, end name conventions that we had there. And this has to be done in the following way. Um, I have a string called tech format default. And I illustrated it there in, in uh, module 439 um, uh, as being something like this tech formats dot uh, basic tech um, basic format excuse me some string that indicates the, the default file name that you would use the default name of file that you would use if uh, the, the you if if there is no specified file name given um, and uh, what's, what what pack buffered name is supposed to do? It's supposed to take the first n characters of this string, and uh, then it's supposed to take characters a to b out of the buffer. Buffer is uh, something we use for input buffers, yeah, for for input uh, from the terminal. So buffer a through b um, inclusive. Uh, and then the last four characters of this string, dot .fmt. That's the way that thing is defined right now. This is a procedure, pack buffer name, that has to be used when tech is really bootstrapping itself to get going at the beginning of a job. It's not allowed to call error messages yet because the error routine isn't, isn't uh, workable. Error routine needs strings. Um, so this is way at the beginning when when uh, when tech has uh, is just being born. Every time when it's been if it's been loaded, um, and that is uh, uh, messy. But there was no other way. I mean, we had to do something at this point to get to get everything going. So uh, that routine is called only in module 441. It's called three times though, um, and. What, ha what, we ha what happens is this. Suppose somebody calls tech and, and, and he's running a, a virgin version of tech, which means that it's not any tech. It's the, it's the, one, that, it's the one that's used for production, um, but the, uh, it could be used, but doesn't have any format preloaded into it. So the next thing that you, that person writes is the name of the format. Uh, so if if uh, the next thing a person writes is Amstech, for example, then it should look for Amstech.fmt uh, in, in some system format area or in, or in the user's format area. Um, and then you could say paper after that, and then you would, you, it would be the paper that you're, um, that you're, this would be a way to call it. If you can't support getting this on your command line, this would be given to the double star prompt that you would get at, uh, right afterwards. Um, but in any case, the first thing would be the format file that, that's to be read in. Um, well, what? So it's sitting in the buffer because this has come. This has somehow gotten into the buffer, and uh, tech will, will know where this thing starts in some position in the buffer, some some subscript in the buffer, and it'll know where it ends in the in the buffer. It looks for a blank space for this purpose. I believe, yeah. Now, so format names should be given. At least that's the assumption that we're, that that we're making here. That and it seems to be reasonable for all the systems we knew of. Um, okay. Now, uh, so what does this uh, module 441 do? Um, it looks first to see whether it's got a backslash. This might also be relax or some some other primitive saying that uh, I don't want you know I. You know, I I don't want you to input any file, any 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 source file. If it's a if it's a backslash like this, then we're going to assume we got the basic 
format that we're going to, uh, this default one is going to come in. So let's suppose it's not a backslash. Then we look for this um, uh, dot .fmt. Pretty sure that's exactly. If we first try without the system file area and uh, with the dot .fmt, so we call pack buffered name on this whole on this thing, but with n equals zero, so we don't pick up any of the of the first part. And so it'll look it'll look for amstex dot fmt on the user's uh, on, on the user's area. If it doesn't find that, then uh, it tries next with uh, the system file area. So then it sets n equals some number that's uh, the number of, of strings to use. It's called uh, format default length. Format default length is n in the next time, so it'll try for tech dot formats amstex. It should find it then. But if it doesn't, then it pulls out all the stops and uses this whole format default name. Sets A and B to something like zero, 1 and 0 or something so that you won't pick up anything off of the user's area. And that would be the normal case. The normal case is that there is no specific format given here. It just has the name of the person's paper. And so it, won't, so it would pick up the system area and the, and the user wouldn't have to know that there was even a chance to, to, to specify another format at that point. At that point. Yeah, question? Yes, why do you use the backslash to the current escape character there? Sorry? Why, why are you using the backslash instead of the current escape character, which may not be the backslash anymore? Yeah, the, uh, 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 the, the uh, uh, backslash is always uh, assumed to be an escape character. It's the only character that, whose type is known, but in, the, in, in Tech 82, we, we are uh, starting out assuming that backslash is an escape character as, a, as, a, as an assumption. This means really the code whose internal tech code is, is uh, Octo 136. It, it, it doesn't have to be visibly a backslash, but it has to be the character that's internal code is one, is, I mean, uh, uh, at the code table initially, um, uh, re understands uh, letters um, and that and that backslash. Uh, the, this other idea that we had in tech, uh, uh, the present tech, that the first character you type in is going to be your escape character, uh, sounded good to us at the time in 1977, but it's caused no end of confusion ever since. And uh, and uh, and uh, uh, there were great sighs of relief when I when I uh, uh, told my group that uh, we were going to assume that we, we know uh, that it's going to be backslash. Uh, one, of the, one of the most funny examples of this in the other case of tech was when the, the, a novice user approached tech, it gave the, gave the prompt of asterisk and uh, the type in was paper. It seemed a reasonable thing to do compared to other systems that were there. Well, so P was the backslash character. Um, uh, P was the escape character. So then it had a macro, PA, because this, this escape character terminated it, you see? Well, that's backslash A, that's a, an accent. And so it said, whoa, you have to define a font first. This was a very scary first encounter with tech. Um, now, now this is going to work. And, and, uh, it's, uh, and we found that I think most users wanted that. So, that, so if, if you have some other character that, that's going to be the standard escape at your system, you just publicize that in the manual and everybody will, will be glad to use it. But this, this changeability of the escape character um, was not a win, not a winning idea, so we're dropping it. Now, if somebody says tech, uh, so, so it, also the manual is going to say, how do you run tech? And so it's going to say, well, you give the name of the file that you want, or if, you, or if you're going to do some simple experiment with it, you say backslash relax. You could say backslash input paper wouldn't hurt. But if your first if the first thing that you type in is not a backslash, it assume it, it essentially implies that it was backslash input. And if the first thing you type in was not a for, the name of a format, it assumes that it's going to be the default format. We've res we wrestled around with lots of different possible strategies, and this one turned out to be the one that seemed to, to satisfy all the requirements as well as anything. I think it's going to work well. Um, 
Okay, that's so packed buffered name is is this routine that has to be used in order to get the uh, the the format uh, going at the beginning. It's only used in that one place, and uh, it, and so if you have to do something special for your system, uh, you, you just have to do it at that at that time. Okay, now let's see. Um, Module 442 talks about something that we'd like to do if you can, but it's not necessary to uh, to, to make a change here. And that is uh, uh, to figure out what na what actual what's the actual full name um, of the file that you have just opened. Yes. So if I, for example, if I'm writing paper.dvi. Um, it'd be nice if, if I had a system call that would say that this is actually paper.dvi versions 28. Um, and so that on my, on my transcript file, uh, it will tell me that I have just written this one dot version 28 so that I can tell which, which, which it was. My transcript file will have a date and time on it if we've been able to implement that part, but it is also nice to correlate that with the uh, actual file that you've written out. So there are calls, it's called Jiffins on uh, TOPS 20, and there's uh, various ways to get at uh, uh, hidden things on the sale system, and I'm sure Bax has different calls. Uh, this uh, other operating system usually have a way to say, what is the exact full file name that I have just opened? Um, you have a question? Yes, if you have a system that doesn't uh, allow multiple versions, uh, yeah. do you recommend automatic scratching of old versions? or uh, That's what warning? we have. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what we have. In fact, even on a system that allows multiple versions, uh, they tend to uh, fill up the disk very fast. And uh, we, and uh, um, and uh, if you're paying for it, you, sort of, you, you pretty soon set that as your default. Although uh, I have seen um, uh, in other places where I wasn't paying for it, like when I used the free uh, services at Xerox, uh, uh, sometimes I, I had run up about 210 versions of errors.temp at one point uh, before I ran out of memory and, and had to go, had to go back to my recent version. But uh, no, they, they, they accumulate very fast, and it's nice to have, but it's a luxury. Um, and uh, the, the system that I use every day, uh, um, I, I get by with only the most recent version, and only, uh, only uh, twice a year do I uh, go through fits of anxiety because I just clobbered it, uh, uh, something that I, that I needed. Um, anyway, if you're used to working on that kind of a system, you, you, you learn how to protect yourself against disasters most of the time, yeah. Uh, but uh, I, I, I don't know. This, not everybody will agree with these things. But anyway, we've got this make name string function, which, which is supposed to take either the, the file that you've just opened um, uh, and find out what it is. Uh, uh, and, and so we give the, the make name string. I have three functions defined there. A, make name string for an alpha file. B, make name string for a byte file. And W, make name string for a word file. Only because, um, only because in Pascal I had to have a type associated with a file name, uh, unless I'm writing a system procedure. Um, and these would return a string that gives me the, the, full, uh, the full file name. Uh, uh, and uh, including, like in our system, it would tell me that, that I found one on the system area, uh, if, I, if that was the one that was actually being input. Um, if, you, if you can't do that, you could generate it just from name of file. Uh, but you're supposed to generate a string like this a couple of times for, for error messages and uh, for, for, for uh, historical records that tech uh, makes. Um, uh, I guess I should mention alpha file is a file that uh, corresponds to text uh, like um, like your source uh, like your .tex files that you're inputting. A b byte file is a is a file of 8-bit bytes uh, like a tfm file or a dvi file, and the word files are the .fmt files, the format files that we that are made out of memory words um, uh, that we store and retrieve for uh, uh, initializing tech. Is there some particular global that make name string is supposed to return the name of? Make name string returns a string number. 
and it's given the file a file variable as its input so so the idea is if, if f represents a channel or some, you know if f represents a, a, a channel in in uh, deck jargon is similar to a uh, file variable in pascal jargon um, whatever has just been opened on that file um, uh, we should uh, we should pre we should create a string in text string pool and return the number of that string. So will you always be calling one of the typed versions of this? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I always call one of the typed versions. Right. Um, and by looking in the index, you'll see that it, that each it's only called about twice. You know, but there, but there are those times when I when I when I do want to know the name of the file that I just opened. For example, when I when somebody says input paper. Uh, at in the sales system, and we we saw that on in the demo the other day. So what actually came out of the left parenthesis uh, saying I'm starting to read a file, and then it said paper was capitalized paper dot tdx. That was the default extension applied at that time. Left bracket t. Um, uh, I think whatever what I was logged in under. I think it was pass dek was was there that was printed off and that full name was supplied by my system dependent uh, a make name string <clears throat> the uh, <clears throat> this code starting in module 444 here is supposed to be independent system independent uh, not requiring any any uh, uh, changes by you guys and uh, so it su summarized the way we should have done this begin name, more name, end name. This is the driver that calls that. Uh, there also, it, the driver is also called somewhere else um, where, where it, it pulls the characters out of a buffer um, uh, and when you're declaring fonts. That's in the prompt file name routine which again is supposed to be machine, machine independent. So the rest of this section uh, is it tells about the things that, that ought to work everywhere. Uh, a few of them might maybe might be marked system dependent, but I don't think so. So the, uh, the critical um, problems about the timing of these things, fitting it in with all of text uh, input and output routines, getting it to going in the right place. I think I've uh, done that in a system independent way. All you have to do is is these routines that are defined without knowing much of the logic of tech. You just have to. These are system uh, system problems. I tried to factor out the the uh, the, the uh, tech algorithms, the thing specific tech, into and and leave you just with uh, uh, comparatively simple tasks: begin name, more name, end name that don't depend on on the fact that tech is also writing paragraphs and and uh, has has even and even that you don't have to know that tech is going to be uh, uh, prompting the user um, to give you another one if you can't find the other one. I mean that logic in prompt file name um, is supposed to work in all versions of tech. You want to look at prompt file name a I minute. Mean, that's module 448. It um, <clears throat> it has two parameters. One of them is is, uh, is descriptive of what kind of a file it's, it, it wants, and the other one is, is the uh, default extension that it would, would apply. And uh, it, it, uh, uh, it either says, I can't find file uh, paper.tech or something like that, or it says, um, I can't write on file paper.tech. See, print file name is a, is a system dependent procedure that I neglected to mention. It must have been in one of those. It must have been, oh yes, yes. On module 435, I didn't mention you need a, a, a procedure that takes three strings as input and it and it prints them out as a name that might have produced them. That's such a simple procedure. I short one. I forgot to mention it. So print file name is one you got to write also, if unless it's the same as the one there. Um, so it prints out the name that it can't find, and then it. Um, uh, if the extension is .tex, it shows the context of the message. In the case of uh, save uh, of send files, and in the case of input files, um, uh, it was appropriate to show uh, 
uh, to show the uh, uh, where the file name appeared in the person's input. But in the other cases, this was a file name that was manufactured behind the scenes, and uh, the context wouldn't make sense. So, so this. Uh, that's why it doesn't uh, show context in the in the other cases. But show context is a subroutine that prints out these two line um, uh, indications of where you are in in your source file on on, on an error message. Then it'll say, please type another s. Please type another input file name. Please type another output file name. Something like that. Um, it looks next to see interaction. That's one of the things that tech has. It's, a lev it's, it's uh, four levels of interaction. There's batch mode, non-stop mode, scroll mode, and error stop mode. And if the interaction level is either batch mode or non-stop mode, then you're not supposed to ever mention a file name that couldn't be found. Uh, so your job is aborted at that time. Batch mode, for example, is intended for overnight running. And if you can't find the file at that time, you're dead. Uh, there's nothing to substitute for. Um, but otherwise, if you were in scroll mode or error stop mode, then you get a chance to input a new file name. Um, in the first two cases, it would have at least told you what it, what it couldn't find before it died. Uh, now, let's see. Um, so then it clears the terminal. Clear terminal means uh, uh, show, uh, in case the user has been typing ahead, uh, cancel what he's been typing ahead. Um, that's a system-dependent thing you'd have to do. Uh, some, some people think they, they're, they know what's going to go on, and they, they, they start uh, typing away and, and uh, save themselves some time. But uh, in, in an error like this occurs, um, then uh, they, they don't want uh, uh, what they typed ahead to be considered the new file name. So we clear that. We prompt them um, uh, and scan the file name in the buffer, which is the next module that, that is another call on begin name, more name, and end name. Um, uh, the prompt input routine gets something from the terminal and puts it in the buffer. Uh, after we've uh, got the file name in it and we've got an empty extension, we, we use E as the default for an empty extension. We pack the uh, current name. Uh, that's a macro call explained there that calls pack file name in, with the current name, current area, and current extension. So that's the logic there in prompt file name. That logic you shouldn't have to change. Uh, that logic was the, you know, is something that knows about the rest of tech. Um, the other routines that I've mentioned don't have to. Um, yeah, one more thing I want to make, one more point I want to make before I, before we close, before I forget it, and that is this reset procedure here that opens a new file. It's not only supposed to be something that that um, uh, is able to open another file, but it's supposed to be. It's, it's not supposed to give us a system error message in case it, it couldn't find the file. Um, and otherwise, you will have to change text logic. So I want to explain that. If the, or, and similarly, rewrite is another one where, where you have a file variable and, and a name of file, uh, where you're trying to open uh, or, or uh, get, get ready to write on a certain uh, uh, file name that you've generated in your program. Now, um, these I, I have procedures called open, um, a open, b open for alpha file opening and b file opening. But uh, uh, and they're, they're going to return true or false based on whether or not they were successful in opening this. But uh, when they call reset and rewrite. And you you need procedures reset and rewrite that are going to let you tell that that are going to let you know whether that file. Uh, was there or not? And the way um, the way Hendrix Pascal does it, I think, is the best solution. And that is, it, you look at EOF at the end of after you've done a reset. And if and uh, if EOF is um, is false, it, it's is false, then you were successful of uh, on opening this file. You you found a file for input because you're not at the end of the file. And for for output, if EOF is true, you're successful. You've, uh, you've successfully gotten that file ready for output. Um, but if the opposite holds, so if you try to reset and you found that, you, that EOF was true, this is what uh, this, 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 this says, uh-oh, the file wasn't there. And uh, if you tried to rewrite and you get a false EOF, you're not in the file, this is your clue that the file wasn't there. Now, if you do, if, on the other hand, if you're using a Pascal runtime system that's real smart, 
and it says, uh, oh yes, I couldn't open this file, so, I, so I'm going to ask the user for a file name myself. Well, then the user might get an inscrutable error message that isn't tied into the tech system. Uh, but then uh, the op but the, but that's not the worst of it. The worst of it is that the um, um, that the reset procedure will always return this condition, and so tech will always think, no matter what the user typed, that it was okay. Um, so, for example, you you misspell your file name, um, or uh, then uh, it appears in the error message. Uh, you know, say say you, you you didn't know what you were supposed to do. You typed a question mark. And um, tech um, will uh, will then um, uh, um, call to open the file question mark dot tech for input. Okay. Well, the, uh, the the Pascal runtime routine will try to open question mark dot tech. It won't find it, and it says you know it'll say something like uh, file uh, uh, not found question mark dot tech uh, uh, new file name. What should it be? So you type in a new file name. Oh yes. Uh, paper.tech and it finds it but then tech is going to going to look at this question mark and think it was okay so it's going to try question mark dot err for the transcript file and it's going to try question mark dot dvi for the output file because it because tech didn't have any indication that anything went wrong um, and so you're going to get have to type all those three in in also uh, afterwards um, so so it's so we want to use a version of uh, reset. We want to make sure that this reset gives gives the information and the chance to make error messages to to tech, and, not, and doesn't try to do it all itself. If not, you have to think of some other way around that. Okay, uh, now so that finishes our our first hour and five minutes. Um, Arthur, is it quick? Uh, yes. Uh, on, on some systems that do that, you might still be able to find out the name of the file uh, that was opened. Oh, there would be a way out, probably. But uh, but you will have to, to have to get into uh, um, some of the logic of tech in that case, and 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 and, and work a little harder. The, the, right now, it's set up, it's set up for under the assumption that we are able to have a, a procedure open that will. Um, that will be able to return true or false as to whether it was successful open or not, and uh, and uh, we're trying to give a good indication of uh, of what files we couldn't uh, we couldn't open. Since you asked a question that reminded me, you you had asked earlier a question about uh, about the tech uh, the standard area, and what happens when you type backslash input. So if you want to look that up, that's module 454, uh, where the um, uh, where the file for input is actually opened and the calls unpacked file name with a tech area that's a, a macro defined to be the standard area used to be used in case you have a, an area that commonly uh, commonly used input files uh, appear okay and I believe the same this exactly the same uh, input systems are going to be used in Metafont. So once you solve this problem for tech, you'll also have it solved for Metafont. Next year, it'll, your job will be a lot easier. Okay, uh, have a nice break and see you again at 11 o'clock.